My name is Sam Vaknin. I am a columnist in uh, Brussels Morning. And no, I am not a Muslim. <laughs> I'm not a Muslim, but I'm still shocked. Both Freud and Marx maintain the view that all religions are mass psychogenic illnesses, socially sublimated delusional disorders, and I couldn't agree more. But many people hold dearer than life various artifacts associated with these beliefs, counterfactual as they may be. Burning the Quran is an act intended to provoke pain and indignation in these faithful. It is nothing short of cruel and sadistic. Taunting the mentally ill should invariably be outlawed. There ought to be limits to free speech, and this should be one of them. <clears throat> this week in uh, Sweden, an Iraqi national, a temporary resident in that Scandinavian country, a far-right activist by the name of Salwan Momika, set fire to the holy book, to the Quran, outside the central mosque in Stockholm on June 28th just before Eid al-Adha, the holiday in the Muslim calendar. Equally shocking is the fact that he was allowed by the domestic courts in Sweden to proceed with this barbarity unimpeded. The Swedish police could do nothing, even when faced with the prospects of mass and justified civil unrest. The Swedish government it distanced itself from this uncivil public sacrilegious protest, criticizing it, but making clear that making clear its impotence owing to the ill-conceived intervention of the judiciary. The Swedish authorities called the demonstration, I quote, polarizing and offensive, disrespectful, a clear provocation, legal but not appropriate talk about understatements. <laughs> they opened an investigation on a charge of agitation against a national or ethnic group involving the 37-year-old man who stamped on the Quran and tore it to pieces before he incinerated it gleefully. In retaliation, Muslims the world over burned Swedish flags and the 57 members of the Organization for Islamic Cooperation called for collective action to prevent a recurrence of the desecration of the Quran. The Swedish court's decision is odd, to use an understatement. Burning the Quran is indisputably a form of hate speech directed at a religion, an instance of Islamophobia. International law prohibits it unequivocally. The event has broader implications. Islamic Turkey is leveraging the incident to further delay the accession to NATO of Sweden in this month's summit. Sweden's border controls have been enhanced. Putin reminded the world that such an act in Russia would be criminal because Russia respects, I quote, religious feelings. Way to go, Putin. In their tome, How Democracies Die, the authors Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Ziblatt expound on the gatekeeping functions of political parties and courts. Extreme speech, which challenges democracy and tolerance, should be sidelined, they say. This doesn't go far enough. Such discourse should be outlawed some speech acts are illegitimate. The course of free speech should always be a prohibitive and inhibiting consideration. They should be factored in. Who gets hurt? Who is put at risk? What scarce resources are being squandered? Which collective interests are jeopardized, compromised or sacrificed, etc., etc.? The sociologists Bradley Campbell and Roger Manning sounded the alarm about the rise of victimhood culture. Coupled with political correctness and woke tyranny, we have gone too far with moral relativism 
and social anomie. We need to re-establish firm guardrails. We need to agree on a set of minimal, immutable values. We then must apply these values rigorously, and we must ban words which have the overwhelming potential to turn into sticks and stones. We should not recoil in the face of naming and shaming, guilt-tripping and blame-shifting by self-styled victims. Whoever is unhappy with the West's creed and with the West's institutions can seek Putin's brand of freedom in the Russian Federation in the footsteps of Edward Snowden. Those who burn books will ultimately burn people, quipped Heinrich Heine memorably. A Jew, he must have had a premonition. The Quran is a book. The resurgence of the far right across Europe now seems to culminate in the cremation of books in public. Echoes of the past. Have we learned nothing from history? This should have never been allowed to happen. Never. Shame on the feeble-minded, spineless judges in Sweden who let this atrocity take place. Let this toxin be a toxin, a wake-up call.